the group economists at Standard Bank reckon that um, growth next year is going to be at about 2.5%. And that's at the same time that the IMF uh, and their other colleagues are saying it's going to be at about 3%. Um, I sincerely hope they're wrong. And in fact, I think they are wrong based on what one sees in the real economy. And I'll come back to that uh, a bit later. Looking further ahead, uh, they're saying from 2015 to 2016, we'll be back up at about 4%. And then when they look further afield into the rest of the continent, everybody's seeing growth of about 5%, going up to 5.5%. And everybody's noticing that on the continent, um, we containing six or seven of the 10 fastest growing nations uh, in the world. And many South African corporates are trading with companies uh, in, those, uh, in those countries. And in those countries, as is the case indeed in South Africa, one sees some fantastic and interesting demographics. The middle class on the African continent is now about 160 <coughs> million uh, people. These people are getting healthier, wealthier, they're getting younger, and they're getting more productive. They're buying more financial assets, they're acquiring houses, they're acquiring fridges, and they're building homes. It's happening on the continent, and it's also happening um, here in South Africa. If you were to look at a business such as Standard Bank, you would notice that 25% of our revenues now come from operations outside South Africa, and that is increasingly becoming the South African story. Goldman Sachs, I hate to admit it, uh, great marketing on their part, have produced a very interesting paper which makes the point that we're living in a wonderful neighborhood. And I agree with them. Uh, I travel a lot into those neighborhoods, and I am in a lot of those airports and sleep in, on many of those beds, and I think they're right. We're living in a very a good neighborhood, which will benefit us as South Africa. Uh, turning more to home, there are some self-inflicted injuries and own goals that we are scoring. And I think the finger is often pointed at government, but I think the finger has to be pointed at government, at business, at, at, the, at the labor movement. Perhaps starting with government. God didn't stop uh, in Mozambique and Angola when he was building the world. He continued down the east and the west coast, and we have got oil and gas uh, around the, our own coast. Our economists reckon that if we are to exploit that opportunity, including shale gas, by the way, in the interior, if we were to properly exploit that opportunity in the medium term, one could easily add a percent to a percent and a half per year onto the country's GDP. So if our trend growth is 4%, you add another 1.5%, we're living in interesting times. In addition to that, the strengthening of our institutions, and I would submit to you that there is lots of evidence that our institutions are being strengthened, you end up in Nigeria territory in terms of growth. But these self-inflicted uh, injuries, we have the Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Act, well-conceived piece of legislation, but with a number of problems, which could have an adverse impact on the development of the oil and gas industry as well as minerals and resources. There is a debate on the go, and it is my earnest hope that at the beginning of next year there will have been a resolution. It's wonderful to see that the minister has indicated in public that uh, the parties are finding one another. Um, often, one finds government departments at cross purposes. Um, one government department, let's say DTI, attracting foreign direct investment. At the same time, another department, uh, Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, uh, preventing foreigners from acquiring uh, real estate. Where are they to build their factories if they don't have a real estate? One has to accept that often the policies being driven are internally consistent, but when one looks at them as part of a value chain, they often don't make sense. In business, one has a mixture of uh, mutually exclusive, often business bodies, driving often mutually exclusive uh, agendas from a business perspective mm -hmm. when there are competitive issues that, that face South Africa and where we could, uh, we could be pulling together. At the end of the day, the challenge, it seems to me, is one of uh, a lack of communication skills. And I see my dear friend uh, from uh, uh, the fourth estate sitting over there, and this point is directed at him and his colleagues. 
But what we often do is we write uh, stuff um, that also, I think, is causes self-inflicted injuries. Our colleagues in economics did a study where they, they looked at uh, human development indexes and economic indexes indices that showed an improvement and showed that country risk in South Africa has actually stayed stable and that, in fact, uh, um, violent crime had decreased by 18%. They analyzed the use of the word violence um, in media, in South Africa and internationally referring to South Africa. The increase of the use of that word was 350%. At a time when uh, one would argue that the Human Development Index was improving violence, so that's the one point. The second point is uh, I had the privilege of attending a conference in New York um, with investors. The most negative people in the room were lapsed South Africans, I have, to, I have to add. And yet the foreigners were more positive about our country than, uh, than ourselves. And so we have a story to tell about ourselves and the things that we say about ourselves. In closing, I'd like to point to two things that give me hope despite uh, the two Cassandras to my right. Um, and, and the one is, there is a dialogue that is starting. To my mind, it is a rich dialogue, it is robust, and it seems to me, it seems to have started after Davos last year. There was a presidential summit, and it was not a ceremonial summit. It was a proper discussion about a number of issues which have, con which have coalesced into five basic principles which uh, are important for, for South Africa. The one is what do we do about education and skills and training. The other one is about what do we do about infrastructure. The other one is what do we do about regulation, which is often incoherent, as I pointed out. And it's a real discussion. It's not finger pointing. It's not grandstanding. It is a proper discussion amongst patriots, and I think it ought to be supported. And lastly, there's the National Development Plan. There's often a sense that we don't have a vision. This country does have a vision. It's got a plan. It's written down and it is being implemented. And it's great to see that certain ministries are already setting their targets and their budgets on the basis uh, of that plan. And so uh, I'm not as pessimistic 